Hello, welcome to Get It Done with Gabby. And today we are going to be talking about potty training my 15 month old. So I'm gonna try and keep this pretty casual and just kind of show you what we've been doing because I don't know when you're allowed to actually say that your kid is potty trained because I feel like there's different stages to like get it completely wrapped up and finished. But I feel like it's worth discussing because I have so many questions and so if anybody has any advice for me on how to like adjust what I'm doing or anything like that, please let me know kindly. If you do have a thought, <laughs> do it kindly. Don't be rude if you like aggressively disagree with something I'm saying, but uh, yeah, this is my first kid, so I'm just, I'm doing the best I can here. For starters, if you're new to the channel and enjoy motherhood content, uh, definitely consider subscribing. I would love to have you join my channel. To start with, we have been doing something called elimination communication since she was about three months old. If you have no information or understanding on what that is at like a basic level, I can give you like a general brief overview. Basically, you teach your kid to go to the bathroom in their diaper. So instead of doing that, you just teach them to use the potty from the very get-go. There's way more detail that goes into it than that, but the idea is basically that they are either never using diapers or are out of diapers as quickly as possible. So we have been doing part-time elimination communication since she was three months old. Now that, in my opinion, plays a huge role in our ability to like fully potty train her now at 15 months old because she has been exposed to using the regular potty and her tiny potties from a very, very young age. So I definitely think that helps. Sorry, there's a bee that is going to attack me. We got to go inside. Okay, <laughs> we're inside now away from the bee. Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought. That scared the crap out of me. So we have been doing... <laughs> the EC stuff, EC elimination communication, just for shorthand. We have been doing that since she was three months old. And that started with basically you hold them over the sink or potty to go to the bathroom. Again, I don't want to get too much into what EC is. Like if you know, you know, if you don't YouTube it, there's plenty of people out there who know what the heck they're talking about. And, um, I followed Andrea Olson. Um, I will, if I can remember, I will link her page in the description, but she's like one of the queens of EC. So she's got tons of information. I have her book. I've listened to her podcast, all that jazz, all the details she has. Anyway, <laughs> back to the potty training my 15 month old. We have been exposing her to the potty since she was three months old to varying degrees, depending on my commitment, because it is entirely up to the adult how successful the kid is at this because if you decide you need to take a break and you just kind of stop then sh she's not learning anything you're just teaching her to go in her diaper which we definitely did numerous times I would be super committed to having her use the potty things would be going really well and then something would happen where I'm like oh we need to take a break whatever the reason is and then we're just in diapers for a while so uh, Commitment is key. Basically, things came to a head and I decided that she had reached a point in time where it is recommended or understood in the EC community that you can wrap things up between 12 to 18 months. So basically around walking age is when you can expect things to be like finishing up. We had hit the stage where things were going worse. Like at a few months ago, we were catching like 97% of her poos and uh, we had basically fallen to 0% like things were not going well and so I just was like okay we gotta we just have to fully commit we just have to fully commit and get this done because if we don't fully commit she's not fully committed and then we're just giving her confusing signals as to what she's supposed to be doing which just exacerbates the problem and you know doesn't help unfortunately I got this harebrained idea when she was going through her ninth developmental leap, which I think was probably the worst mistake I could have made, but I was so determined. I just had the blinders on and I was like, I don't care what's happening. 
we are committed. Uh, now, one of the main steps to wrapping up EC is naked time. You basically keep their diaper off, observe them, their cues. Uh, a huge indicator is when they're telling you about the potty. Now, she wasn't telling me. She would never really had. Like, the most that I got was she would, like, go hide or, like, start to grunt when she had to go poo. And then I would offer her the potty, like, during the natural times. You would assume someone has to pee. Like, for example, when she would wake up, I would take her to the potty. That kind of thing. But other than that, she never really, like, told me that she had to go potty. Until I committed to this and we just diapers off. I set aside a bunch of time. Actually, I thought I was going to do three-day potty training. I didn't fully understand what that was or when you were supposed to do it, which is 22 months old, which I didn't know until I started doing this. Anyway, I thought I was going to do three-day potty training. So I set aside three days. I was like, we're not doing anything, just this all day long, every day for three days, no diaper, nothing. We're just going to figure this out. And it was, it was a hell of a time. So day one starts, this I believe, okay, so we started exactly two weeks ago. It was when this whole thing started. So we just, we woke up, we went full naked time, like full commitment downstairs. And as you would expect, there was lots of peeing on the floor happening, um, which I had mildly committed to doing this before and saw some success, but only on like day three. So. I already knew the first two days were going to be pretty not great, which is something they tell you in three-day potty training as well. Like the first two days are huge learning days for them. So had the diaper off, full naked time. The good news, however, was that when she was pottying on the floor, she like she would point to it and say potty. So I knew at that point that she was ready to do this because she could identify what was happening. It was just a matter of you know, she's used to peeing in her diaper, so she was, like, not understanding, like, what was happening, why it was all over the floor. She just knew that was potty. And so, over and over again, all day long, it was, yes, that's potty. Potty goes in the toilet, and then we would walk to the toilet and sit down on it and do that over and over and over again. She definitely got fed up with me <laughs> through all of that. You know, she's frustrated. She doesn't want to do this. It's new. It's like a whole thing. And she's going through a leap, so she's already very moody anyway. So day one was a lot of pee on the floor, a lot of poo on the floor. Things were a little crazy. We had a couple catches. Like I said, natural catches, like when she would wake up, if I would just think to take her over there and have her try. We would always do diapers for nap time and for bedtime. Enter day two. Day two a lot of the same, a few more catches. She started to do a little bit of holding, like she would halfway pee on the floor and then hold it and then say potty. So we caught a few like tail end catches on day two, but not a ton of success. For three day potty training, you're supposed to be practicing with underwear so they understand the sensation of peeing in their underwear. We tried it, eh, mild success. A big problem for her is like getting them on and off. I wanted her to be able to independently go to the bathroom and the only way that can happen right now, we haven't done a ton of practicing with like pulling up and down of pants, which is my bad. I should have been doing that with her a long time ago. But as it stands, not great at doing that on her own. So I wanted to make it as easy as possible. So we have dabbled with underwear on and off over the past couple weeks, but I currently fully committed to just naked time because my end goal in all of this is for her to be able to do it without telling me, without assistance, just, you know, go do your potty. You tell me after and I'll wipe you, that kind of thing, you know? Day two, not much better than day one. So I'm holding out for day three. I hear that's where all the success is, all the wonderfulness, all the while, mind you, holding out on giving rewards because one of the huge things with Montessori and elimination communication is that you do not give them rewards for going potty in the potty. That is a big no-no. They're supposed to just understand that this is something that they just do. There is no reward, there's no praise, there's none of that. It's just, you go to the bathroom in the toilet. That's just how it is, which I was totally on board with. And day three and four went really, really well. 
She was nailing it. She was getting it. She was frustrated with me, like trying to get her to go all day long and asking her. She'd get really annoyed with me doing that. But she was doing so much better. She was starting to hold it. She was starting to hold her potty and then do it on the toilet. So I was feeling really good about it, really positive. And then <laughs> enter day five. All hell broke loose. It was full chaos over here. She went into full resistance mode. She did not want to use that potty. Anytime I even mentioned it, she would have a full-fledged meltdown. God forbid I try to make her go into the bathroom and sit down on the potty. Hell no, it was not going to happen. And so I, I broke down on day five. I fully broke down. Like Matt had mentioned a couple times to me, he's like, like, what about treats? What about rewards? I was like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do rewards. It's not like, it's not what we're supposed to be doing. Like it's a bad precedent to set. But day five came around and I broke, I broke down. I broke down by like 10 AM. <laughs> we went to Target so fast and got these little Reese's pieces. And I was like, I don't want her to hate going to the bathroom. That, that sets a bad precedent. Her hating the bathroom, that's bad news. I got to like, I got to turn this around and I got to turn it around now. And so she was a little resistant at first, did not understand. She especially did not like when she would sit down on the potty and not go and then ask for a treat and not get one. Cause I was like, you only get a treat when you go <laughs> pee pee in the potty. And she did not understand that for a little while. And so that would piss her off. But by the end of the day, things were going much better again. She would willingly go to the bathroom. She would willingly sit down on the potty. Things were looking much better. So I was feeling really positive about giving her, a, like, using a reward-based system, you know? And so we continued with that. And things got better and better and better. And we hit a point, what is today? Today's the 21st. It's a, today's the 21st and it's a Thursday. So the day before Easter, which was Sunday. So Saturday, Saturday, we had our first full day of zero potty accidents. We did like a full day of underwear training too. And what I would notice with the underwear training is she would start like dribbling in her undies and then tell me potty and then we go potty. So she was like, she would hold it so long that she couldn't hold it any longer and like kind of start going and be like, ah, I need to go potty now. On that day, we had none of those. We had a full like successful day of no accidents. And so I was like, oh my God, we've done it. We've like, we bridged the gap, unfortunately. On Sunday, we traveled. We traveled two hours away. I brought her tiny potty. I brought all that. And I was like, okay, this is our test. We're leaving the house. We're doing something different. Let's see how it goes. It went medium. It went better than I expected, but it wasn't perfect. And I think it really threw a wrench in the whole process. We definitely used diapers that day. We used diapers the whole day because if she was going to pee somewhere, I did not want it to be in our family's house, you know? So she had her diaper on all day and she went potty a few times with me. I caught her poo that day, which was awesome. I wasn't expecting to do that. Um, and I caught most of her peas, but she was not indicating to me that she had to go potty. Like even a lot of the times at home when she would have a diaper on, she would still tell me she had to potty so we could take it off and go pee on the potty. When we were away, it was just a completely different environment and she was not signaling to me, not telling me anything. So I was just trying to guess and catch and take her every once in a while to see if she had to go. And then the next day we were back to peeing on the floor. Not fully, not like in the beginning, but it was just like very disheartening to see her like you know, starting to pee in the beginning on the floor again. So I feel like that was a major setback on Monday. And I think after that, I think I might have tried underwear at some point that day, but she just kept peeing in them. So I was like, okay, full reset, back to the beginning, full naked time. And then it occurred to me that because we're striving for independence here, underwear aren't going to work right now because that requires more assistance from me and I want her to be able to do this on her own the best that she can. Since then, we have been full naked time most of the day. And 
it's been a struggle to get her to go do it without me, which is fine. Like I, when she says potty, I'm like, okay, let's go to the potty. And we walk over together and she sits down, but I would like her to do it without me because she technically doesn't need me. She can go sit on her tiny potty and go to the bathroom without me. So that's been what we, what we have been working on currently is the independence part. And, uh, I think we're to the point where I should just kind of show you our setup so that you can get an idea of what we're working with. Here is our tiny potty. My grandpa actually made this for her, which is huge. You can order like one of these little cup things to slide under, but he made this whole wooden chair for her, which is great. However, it's built for older toddlers, so she can't quite sit on it without my help. So I built these little like step things for her so she can totally do it without me. Um, it's kind of out near the living room right now. Like here's our bookshelf and TV and it's just like kind of sitting there. When we started this whole thing, I tried a bunch of different spots, but what we've been doing for a while now is having it in the bathroom. I had it right here in the corner and we were doing that for quite some time. I only recently moved it out here as of yesterday because I'm trying really hard to get her to do this without my assistance. And so I figured if maybe it was more in her like peripheral, she'd be more likely to go over there on her own. It's worked a couple times, not as well as I would have hoped, but I am going to keep it out here for now. Just like I said, if she sees it, maybe she'll be more inclined to go use it. I know that's a big point of contention for a lot of potty training people. And a big rule of thumb is to keep it in the bathroom. But uh, I don't know, this seems to be working mildly right now. So maybe if she gets more consistent, I'll slowly scoot it back in there. But for now, this is where it's living. Another big thing we've been doing to get her to sit on the potty for longer instead of just like standing up right away is books. Books on books on books on books. We will read like three to five books if necessary to keep her on the potty because sometimes she just needs a second to calm down enough or relax enough to go to the potty. So that's been one of our huge moves and our another debatable thing is our Reese's Pieces bag in the bathroom. So originally my reward to her was that she could flush the potty because we would obviously dump the pee and stuff into the potty and I would let her flush it. Um, but that wasn't working as big enough reward and the Reese's Pieces seemed to be doing the trick. So one of my major questions in all of this is how do you get rid of the treats? Because obviously eventually you, you can't have treats for going potty forever, right? So how do you back off? My current technique is if if she does not ask for it, I don't I don't give it to her. Like if I'm I try to distract her after she goes potty, I'm like, yay, pee pee in the potty, wonderful. Like, and then I try to like direct her to something else and so only if she's like treat treat does she I'll give her the treat like that's not a big deal but is that a sound method do I just hope she gets distracted because I feel like once that bag has run out of treats I'm not gonna go get more if you guys have a good suggestion for removing treats from the equation please let me know oh another huge thing I forgot to mention she is in this phase where she just says no to everything all the time whether she means it or not <laughs> If we're like, do you want to go down the slide? No, no. She wants to go down the slide. <laughs> She'll go down the slide right after she says no. She's just in this phase where if you ask her a yes or no question, the answer will always be no, no matter what she actually means. So that's been a, another huge point of contention because she'll be like, potty. And I'm like, okay, go sit down the potty. No. Do you need to potty? No. As she's like, grabbing her crotch and doing the potty dance like okay yes you do need to go to the potty but everything is no 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 so that has been another huge issue and i know i need to stop asking her yes or no questions it's just like so instinctual and natural to ask her those and i catch myself all the time i'm like i should be giving her choices not yes or no questions because i already know the answer to the yes or no question but that i think that's more of a me issue but Anyway, like I said, definitely take any suggestions on how to get rid of the treats. Another big question is how to encourage her to do it on her own. I'm trying to back off and try to like coach her from across the room instead of walking her to it. I'm like, yeah, go sit down in the potty like I'm right here. 
Um, but if you have any suggestions on how to get that more independent, please let me know. Like I said, it's been two full weeks. I feel really good about it. Like we only ever use like two, maybe three diapers a day because she has her overnight diaper and her nap diaper. Um, and then we'll put a diaper on her if we like leave the house or something. But she has been doing so good at not pottying in the diaper when we leave the house. So I'm about to switch her. Like we do walks a couple times a day and I'm thinking that I might get gutsy enough to put underwear on her for our walks just to like start getting her accustomed to out and aboutness without a diaper. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. Um, <laughs> like I said, this is my first kid. So this is kind of just a giant experiment. I've been trying to collect as much like information as I can from the internet, but there's so many different ways of doing this. Like, and I know I'm doing this fairly early as far as like regular potty training standards are concerned. So I know I'm ahead of the game anyway. I just, I know she can do it and I want to see her successful. And I don't know if it's just like a phase thing where she's just so stubborn about everything and it's just bad timing on my part, but I will show you guys our other tiny potty because our other tiny potty is the one we travel with. Um, it's in her bedroom right now, so and she's napping, so I'll show you that when she wakes up. But that's our upstairs potty. Uh, we also have potties that go on top of the regular toilet. We were using those on and off a lot, like you know, since she was little and could sit up. And sometimes she really likes to sit on the big potty, but right now she's in a phase where she does not want to sit on the big potty. So we've kind of abandoned our little like potty topper things like the seat shrinkers or whatever. They just make the hole smaller so she can actually sit on it. But we have one for downstairs, the downstairs toilet and one for the upstairs toilet. But like I said, we're not using those. We're using that little potty I showed you that my grandpa built. And then we have another plastic tiny potty that we keep upstairs. And those seem to be working really well for us. But ideally, at the end of the day, I would like her to go potty in the big toilet. So I'm thinking that the next step in this is once she masters using her little potty, maybe try and transition her into like a step stool situation. I guess I'm just not that pressed about her going in the big toilet right now. Like she's just so small. I, she can walk to her tiny potty and go potty in there. That is totally good with me. Can you say hi? Oh, you are very cute. This lady has awakened from her nap. What do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Should we show him your potty? <laughs> She's still very snuggly because she just woke up, but she woke up and went potty in the toilet, so that was super successful. Good job, Miss Queen. Um see if I can grab this with my toes okay this is her tiny potty it's called the baby potty this is the like the classic elimination communication potty uh, you can pretty much use it from the moment your baby can sit up on their own so like I said we started at three months because I tried it a couple times before then but it just didn't really make any sense to me like it didn't seem worth it to mess with it before then and quite honestly looking back now I'm not even sure it was worth starting that early like maybe at six months old for my next kid I don't know we'll see I felt really like excited about it in the beginning so I don't know just trying to wrap it up now I don't know how worth it it was to start at three months old if you're not completely committed to doing it all the time so I don't know something to consider Hang up. what do you think Hang up. my video assistant abandoned me to go into her uncle's room anyway so this has been our go-to potty this is the one I take when we go places like when we left on Easter this is the one I brought with us because you can just like throw it in the car, throw it in your trunk. It's really light, easy to move around. It's handy. I would say overall though, she prefers that other tiny potty I showed you downstairs, but honestly it varies so frequently what toilet she prefers to go to the bathroom in. I can't swear by anything, but this one has been 
the one we've had the longest. And I kind of put it away because I thought she was done with it, but I got it back out to have a tiny potty up here and it's been coming in clutch. So definitely worth hanging on to. I think it's like 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something like that. Super cheap. So totally worth it. But anyway, I think that is all that I wanted to talk about with this potty training thing. Like I said, I don't know when you're allowed to say that your kid is potty trained. Like she won't be completely potty trained for a while. Like until she starts like sleeping through the night without pottying, we're still going to use diapers for sleeping. I think our next biggest like jump in this potty training experience will be like outings without a diaper. Like if I can run to the store quick and have her own underwear, I feel like that will be another huge success. But I feel like we have a really good start and I don't know. I'm super proud of her and it's just, she's always far more capable of things than I think. So she's constantly impressing me with her independence. So I'm just very excited about the whole thing. I'm glad she's getting the hang of it. And yeah, let me know if you have any tips or tricks or like adjustments I can make for this to be going more smoothly. I think that's all I have for you guys today. If you're new to the channel and enjoy this type of content, definitely consider subscribing and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.